The intense sunlight beats down on me. The sweat that had been gushing out earlier stopped and palpitations and nausea set in. It's unpleasant. Maybe I got heat stroke because I've been working outside for a long time. Perhaps it wasn't such a great idea to tackle balcony cleaning in the sweltering heat, even with my husband's support. It seems like it'll be over soon, but I can't even stand up anymore due to the nausea. I call out my husband's name from the balcony. At that moment, my consciousness faded and I collapsed. Simultaneously, my husband who appeared looks down at me and says, If you are feeling that unwell, I'll take you to the hospital. <laughs> huh? Really? Yeah, I'll even bring the car out, so hop in quickly. Feeling as if I were about to throw up, I managed to get into my car. However, on the way home to the hospital, my husband suddenly dragged me out of the car. I have an urgent matter. Go to the hospital by yourself. Huh? As my husband's car kept getting farther away, I found myself in a difficult situation, able to do nothing but pray. I don't want to be left here. Anyway, I need to hurry to the hospital. Right after that, my husband and I would face an unexpected turn of events. My name is Kelsey Miller. I'm 29 years old. I am an ordinary office worker working for a generic corporation. We only got married two years ago after my husband's pursuit. Our relationship evolved through work because my company had business dealings with his. We can understand and relate to each other well because our job responsibilities are similar. Because my company is larger in scale, overtime tends to be more frequent on my end. However, he understands the situation, especially during emergencies. Due to overtime, there are often times when I can't prepare dinner and household chores end up being postponed to the next day. Yet William doesn't express dissatisfaction or blame me for these situations. However, that doesn't mean he takes over household chores when I work overtime. It seems he's not inclined to do the chores himself, even though he doesn't blame me. During the first year of marriage, I didn't mind much, but as we passed the second year, I gradually began to feel dissatisfaction with my husband. When I came back home the other day after overtime, I found my husband lying around in the sofa watching TV. In the sink, the remains of cup noodles and side dishes he had eaten were left as they were. Welcome back. Thanks for your hard work with overtime today. It's nice to hear words of appreciation, but that's not what I want. Exhausted both physically and mentally from consecutive overtime, I inadvertently expressed what was on my mind. Hey, William, can't you clean up after yourself for the portions you ate? Huh? What's gotten into you? You've never said anything like that before. I don't want to do housework when I come home tired after work. It's fine when I come back on time, but doing chores after overtime is a bit tough for me. I'm not asking you to do it, am I? Do it the next day on your day off. Either way, I don't like the assumption that I have to do everything. Why should I be the only one burdened with household chores in our marriage? I can't help but get emotional, and tears well up. I thought he would understand by now. That's what I believed. But he sighed loudly and unleashed the unimaginable. You say you're the only one, but it's normal for women to do household chores, right? Huh? What are you saying? My mom was the same way, you know. She always took care of the house. That's because your mother was a housewife, right? I'm a full-time employee, just like you, William. That doesn't matter. It's common sense for women to do household chores. Didn't you know that when you got married? I didn't know that. I just loved being with you, William. That's why I wanted to live together. I tearfully pled with my husband, but he doesn't change his expression at all. Moreover, he wears an openly annoyed expression. If you love me, shouldn't you be willing to put effort into household chores for my sake? I also want to continue working even after marriage. 
and I let you work without saying anything. What do you mean? Do you dislike me or something? A wife prioritizing work over returning home early is abnormal, you know. A normal guy would have divorced you by now. Don't you understand that I've been able to maintain our relationship because I'm kind? I'm not prioritizing work over you. I thought that both of us working would allow us to save money for the future. After all, money is more important than me, right? Well, it's fine, but I'm feeling really put off. It's not like that. From that day on, my husband's attitude changed completely. When I come home from work, there's no longer the welcoming greeting that used to be there. He doesn't help with household chores or assist on weekends. For some reason, my husband's return home time gradually became later. My husband is closer to his office than I am to our apartment, so until now, he has been home before I am. Lately, my husband has been coming home noticeably later. Moreover, he started returning past midnight without any concern. As a result, I naturally end up spending more time at home. In the past, on days off, we used to enjoy drinking together. But now, those moments of couple time have significantly dwindled. He's late again today. I wait for my husband to talk to him. But even after midnight, he doesn't return. I waited until around 1 a.m., but since there was no sign of him coming back, I went to sleep first. The next morning when I woke up, my husband was on the sofa in his suit. I tidy up the beer can that he probably left half empty, despite feeling disgusted by his sloppy appearance. At that moment, I noticed his smartphone under the sofa was blinking. This blinking is probably indicating a new message. Usually, I wouldn't pay much attention, but for some reason, it bothered me this day. Apprehensively, I picked up my husband's smartphone and secretly placed his finger on the fingerprint sensor to unlock it. When I checked the contents, his usual messaging app was displayed. Maybe there is something not good in here. With determination, I opened the messaging app. However, there were no traces of suspicious exchanges. Thank goodness, I was overthinking it. Then I realized that the notification I just received was apparently not from the messages app, but from the mail folder. When I tapped the email folder slowly, emails were categorized into work, private, and more. In one of the categorized folders, there was one with a heart emoji. Apprehensively, I opened it, and there were traces of an unbelievable exchange. Are you kidding me? Is he cheating? In the folder with the heart emoji, there were signs that my husband was exchanging messages with someone who appeared to be his affair partner. The contents included phrases like, I love you and I want to be together soon. The moment I saw those, everything went dark in front of my eyes. Could it be that William is cheating? Since when? Why would he cheat when we're married? His attitude changed since that conversation we had, but could it be from that time? As I traced back the exchanges, it seemed their relationship had started quite a while ago. Initially, they seemed to go out for meals together, but after he became distant with me, there were records of my husband actively inviting her, staying at her place until late at night. I transferred those exchanges to my own smartphone and headed to the detective agency on the same day. There, I decided to request an investigation into my husband's affair. After that, I tried to maintain as normal a life as possible so my husband wouldn't suspect anything. Even William probably doesn't think I know about his affair. Although I didn't pay much attention before, he spends significantly more time looking at his smartphone compared to before. Presumably, he is in contact with his affair partner. Two weeks later, I received a message from the detective agency saying, We've gathered enough evidence. The photos presented by the investigator conclusively proved my husband's affair. Surprisingly, there was no shock, just overwhelming anger. 
I took the evidence home and decided to discuss the matter with both sets of parents involved. On the weekend, a few days later, I asked them to come over without my husband knowing. As I cleaned the room to welcome them, finally in the early afternoon, my husband returned home. By the way, you haven't been taking care of the balcony lately, have you? Oh, yeah. I've been busy recently and I might have neglected the cleaning. Make sure to get it done. If the mom's come and it's not in proper shape, I'll be embarrassed too. If that's the case, couldn't you help a bit? I always say it, don't I? Household chores are a woman's job. Having uttered those words, my husband left the living room and returned to his own room. Soon, this relationship will come to an end. He still doesn't know that. I reluctantly went out to the balcony and started cleaning. Unexpectedly, intense sunlight made my sweat stream down incessantly. I wanted to take more frequent breaks, but I couldn't stop because my husband checked on me periodically. To make matters worse, he told me, Don't come inside until you're finished and closed the balcony door. I had no choice but to continue working for about an hour. Meanwhile, my health was approaching its limits. The strong sunlight mercilessly beat down on me. The sweat that had been pouring a moment ago stopped, and dizziness and nausea welled up. It feels awful. Could it be heat stroke because I've been working outside for so long? It seems like I'm almost done, but the discomfort is so overwhelming that I can't even stand anymore. I called out my husband's name from the balcony. At that moment, my consciousness faded, and I collapsed. Simultaneously, my husband appeared, looking down at me and said, What's wrong? You haven't finished yet. No, it's not that. I feel nauseous. It might be heat stroke. Heat stroke? If you're feeling that unwell, I'll take you to the hospital, really. Eh? Really? Yeah, I'll get the car out, so hurry up and get in. I didn't expect my husband to say that, and I felt a little relieved. While feeling on the verge of vomiting, I somehow got into the car. After driving for about five minutes, the speed suddenly began to drop. Then my husband stopped the car, got out of the driver's seat, and abruptly pulled me out of the car. Wait, William, what are you doing? Urgent matters came up. Go to the hospital by yourself. Huh? Honestly, I don't care what happens to you. I'm going. Wait, please, William. As if to drown out my voice, my husband's car kept getting farther away. I had forgotten about my physical discomfort, consumed by anger toward my husband. Leaving me stranded like this is unacceptable. After cheating on me, he treats me like this when I'm unwell. I will never forgive him. I will definitely get revenge. Slowly standing up, I began to walk, suppressing the nausea. It took me about an hour to reach the hospital on my own. However, my strengths must have reached its limit. While completing the reception process, I collapsed. I was immediately admitted, and a few hours later, my father and mother rushed to the hospital. Jeez, I was really surprised. Suddenly hospitalized with heat stroke. Comforting my almost teary mother, I apologized. I'm sorry for causing your worry. I went on and told them everything. Actually, William is cheating on me. I wanted you to come to the house to talk about this. What? Cheating? William is? I had the detective agency investigate and the evidence is in that bag. Is this a joke? I found it strange that William didn't come to the hospital. On the way to the hospital, he forcibly dragged me out of the car. So I walked to the hospital on my own. No way. My mother had a pained expression on the verge of tears. On the other hand, my father's face turned red with anger. Kelsey? Can I borrow these photos for a moment? Huh? Yeah, sure. 
thanks. I won't let that guy do as he pleases. Dad? While I didn't quite understand the meaning of his words, it was easy to imagine that my father was quite angry. He told me to rest and left the hospital with my mother. I informed my husband that I had been hospitalized and decided to focus on treatment for the time being. After receiving various treatments, I finally recovered a few days later. My mother came to pick me up and she drove me home. I'm back. When I opened the front door, there were a large number of shoes scattered about. Clearly, not my husband's. Hastily heading to the living room, I found my father and in-laws there. Next to them, my husband beaten up and a pale-faced woman were slumped over. Uh, what's going on? When I asked, my father spoke coldly. After visiting you, Kelsey, I went to see William's parents to show them evidence of the affair. Is that so? Yeah. And then William's parents came to this apartment with us. And wouldn't you know it, William and this woman were inside. You informed him about your hospitalization, didn't you? Could it be that he knew I was hospitalized and brought his mistress into our home? That's exactly what happened. Thanks to that, we were able to witness the affair scene with our own eyes. It seems that the beating my husband received left him in a terrible state. Even my mother and mother-in-law, who are usually so kind to me, stared at him with a devilish look on their faces. My husband, perhaps no longer able to bear their attitude, complained to me with tears in his eyes. I... I didn't mean it, Kelsey. It wasn't like I was serious about that relationship. This was just a fling. A fling? After all those messages about wanting to be together quickly? It was just a spur-of-the-moment thing. What I truly love is stability. The affair partner, reacting to my husband's words, started making a fuss. Amidst their quarrel echoing through the room, I slammed my hand on the table, silencing them. You've got to be kidding me. Do you really love me? Then why did you leave me there in such a bad shape? There was even a chance I could have died. Despite that, you prioritized your affair over me. And that's not all. W wait, it's not what you think. At that time, she told me to come quickly. Wasn't it just an excuse to visit her place? You intended to drop me off from the beginning. You expect me to believe the words of a scumbag like you now? Save your lives for someone who cares. I don't want scum like you interfering with my life anymore. Stay away from me at all costs. Oh no, wait a minute, Kelsey. Don't divorce me. After my husband said that, I took out the divorce papers from my bag. I had received them from the city office on the way back from the hospital. I slammed the divorce papers in front of my husband and then went back to my parents' house. With the corporation of my in-laws later on, a completed divorce form was sent. I signed it and submitted it to the city office. We were officially able to dissolve our marital relationship. After that, I consulted a lawyer and demanded compensation from both William and his affair partner. The affair partner, who was living paycheck to paycheck with a part-time job, struggled to make ends meet with the repayments. Eventually, she had to rely on her parents, and it led to the inevitable breakup with William. On the other hand, news of William's affair and divorce quickly spread in the company. Although he didn't get fired, unable to endure the cold attitude from those around him, he eventually resigned on his own. His own parents disowned him, and he is now working part-time jobs. Unable to live in the apartment where we used to reside, he moved to a one-room apartment in a less affluent neighborhood. He seems to be looking for a new job, but finding one has been challenging, and he continues to lead a precarious lifestyle. A month has passed since then, and I left my parents' house to rent an apartment near my workplace. Now I find fulfillment in my daily life focusing on my job. Happiness isn't solely about being with someone you love. I have learned this firsthand. From now on, I want to live a wonderful life prioritizing my own feelings.